Hey friends, today we are hanging out in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we are going to be going to the Disney 100 exhibit at the Franklin Institute. I cannot wait to show you all the historical pieces they pulled out of Walt Disney archives to put on display here in the city of brotherly love. And then we're going to go around and do a little Philly cheesesteak sampling at some of the local iconic stops and let you know which one's our favorite. So we're going to eat some food, visit a museum and have a beautiful Philadelphia kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. Philadelphia is a beautiful city to visit and there are so many things that you can do here. So many historical events have taken place in this city. Obviously the signing of the Declaration of Independence. You can actually go visit Independence Hall and see the Liberty Bell and there's also amazing food. So I'm so happy to just go around and explore a little bit. There are a lot of things I would love to do in the city today. I'm excited to go to the Franklin Institute to see the Disney 100 exhibit. And then also, I'm with my mom and sister, so it's going to be good to take them around and show them some of the spots and try some Philly cheesesteaks, because I don't think they've ever had like a truly good Philly cheesesteak. And I got a couple of spots in mind. We've made our way to the iconic steps in front of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And it might look a little familiar to you if you've ever seen the movie Rocky. A lot of people like to come here and run up and down the steps just like in the movie. And uh, they even have a statue of Rocky himself. There are 72 steps here at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and I'm a big fan of Rocky. So if you're a big fan of Rocky and you come here and don't run up these steps, it's almost like you've never came here at all. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. I could definitely hear the Rocky music playing as I was running up the steps. That might be because there was a bunch of people running up the steps playing the Rocky music, but I was hearing it in my head. It was there. Look at this view. You can see City Hall and William Penn on the top, and then uh, you can stand exactly where Rocky uh, stood. Look at that. He has small feet. I'm getting in the extra steps so that I can enjoy the Philly cheesesteaks later on. And once you get up to the top, it is beautiful. And here it is, the Rocky Balboa statue. It's located just at the bottom of the steps. And it's got a little thing here. It says, Rocky Balboa, it's not how hard you hit, it's how hard you can get hit. And keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. The statue is dedicated to the great city of Philadelphia and brotherhood of its people. Well, that was a good start to the day. A little rocky to get us all inspired. And now it's time to make our way over to the Franklin Institute. We got our tickets for the Disney 100, but it's actually done by a select time. So it's almost our time. So we got to get our way over there now. Right here is a map that shows you exactly where we were and where we're going. And it's really awesome because we were standing here uh, on the steps of the Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia Museum of Art. And now we made our way down the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. And right here is the Franklin Institute. And then down here is City Hall and JFK Plaza. Look at that. It was $45 for the ticket to get into the Franklin Institute to see the Disney 100 exhibit. And uh, I'm kind of excited. I thought $45 was a little pricey. I don't know if that gives us access to the whole Franklin Institute or if it's just the Disney exhibit, but we're going to find out. And here it is, the Franklin Institute in honor of Benjamin Franklin. Disney 100, the exhibition world premiere. Look at that. It's such a nice building too. Wow, look how amazing it is in here. And I found out that the $45 does give you access to the whole entire museum. So we can actually browse around and show you things other than the Disney 100. I'm wearing my brand new Disney 100 Roosevelt shirt. This is series two. The first series was so popular, they launched a whole new uh, line. And this one's cool, it's called the Sensational Six. Look at that. We got our tickets to head on in, and how dare they call me a Disney adult. Look at that. 
And I just noticed that uh, it says no food or drink and I grabbed a coffee. So I'm gonna have to slam this down before we enter. But here's the entrance. All right, here we go. And I think we're gonna have a quick presentation here. The stage is set, Disney 100. in that I can't even believe it, it was actually really good and I kind of got a little like uh, emotional and now we're gonna continue on through the museum and I'm gonna show you a lot of the amazing things that Walt Disney archives actually provided here and put together Wow this is so cool it starts off right at the beginning with laugh o -Graham Studios and the Alice comedies and it's so surreal because I just got back from Walt Disney's hometown Marceline Missouri and I even went to the original laugh o -Graham Studio and now look at us here and you can see it goes the Alice comedies Oswald the lucky rabbit over here and they even have some sketches they have some sketches here isn't that insane Look at that, clean up animation, Alice Gets Stung, Disney Studio Art, right there, 1925. Holy moly, this is so amazing. And then it eventually leads into the invention of Mickey Mouse and Minnie. And look over here, oh, I knew it was gonna be here. Oh, wow. Some clean up animation of Steamboat Willie, 1928. This is a reproduction of the, ori the original though. This is the earliest known drawing of Mickey Mouse right here. Look at that. Wow, look at Mickey. Definitely looked a little bit different. My mom told me that she has an old film of Steamboat Willie somewhere at her house and I'm pretty sure before I leave I'm gonna go try to find it and dig it out and uh, see the condition of it. I think that's gonna be really cool and maybe I'll show you guys if I do find it. Maybe at the end of the video. Right here is an awesome timeline, the 1920s to the 1930s, 40s, and then the 50s, of course, with Disneyland, all the way going to the 2020s. Look at this. The Mandalorian, Princess and the Frog, Soul, Epcot in the 1980s. I like this. It literally gives you a basic timeline of all of 100 years of Disney, right, in one shot here. They have artwork from Snow White. Look at this. Wow, that is so amazing. And Pinocchio. Pinocchio. They have Pinocchio? Yeah. An animator's model. Oh, wow. Look at that. 1940. This is really cool. Cinderella. Cinderella's over here. Who's this? What's this? I'm like, who's this? What's this? This is, oh, wow. This is kind of cool. This is a costume of Pinocchio right here. Wow. They have so many cool things. They have the Sleeping Beauty book. This isn't the actual book though. This is just a projection on there, but the actual book I think is right there. Oh my God. <laughs> is that the actual book? Prop storybook. I don't know if that's the one or not. You know, in the beginning of Disney movies when the, the book would open up, you know? They actually like had somebody open it? I wonder, like yeah, if that's the one. That's wow. Okay, big Mary Poppins fan here. And this is an actual horse that was used by Julie Andrews in the movie. That's incredible. Like this is all stuff that's held at Walt Disney Archives and they're just putting it on display and that is amazing. 
I can't even, wow. They also have some movie props here from newer films like Beauty and the Beast in 2017 right here. And then they have a Winnie the Pooh. Look at this. How cool is that? This is from Christopher Robin in 2018. Wow. There are so many things. I just keep looking around and I'm, I'm kind of all over the place with it, I know, but I'm just kind of in awe. And I'm sure I'm not gonna put all the clips in because I want to keep a little bit of, you know, mystery in case anyone wants to come and visit. You know, if you wanna come see some of this for yourself. The music inside here is so awesome. It kind of gives you chills, like as you're looking at all of this Disney history. And I wish I can play, like I wish I can play some of the music for you, but I really can't include it too much because it's going to get copyrighted. But it is really nice and it sets the mood. They've got a nice selection of Walt in space over here. Look at Walt Disney, Mars and Beyond, Tomorrowland Adventure. And then you can actually listen in a little bit. <laughs> Here to introduce you to this new series is Walt Disney. In our modern world, everywhere we look, we see the influence science has on our daily lives. Discoveries that were miracles a few short years ago are accepted as commonplace today. Many of the things that seem impossible now will become realities tomorrow. They have a nice photo opportunity with the fairy godmother. Look at it, you're going to become Cinderella. Cinderella, Cinderella. If you're Cinderella, then I'm Gus Gus. <laughs> they have been breaking up the rooms into different like themed areas. And this room is the magic of sound and music in Disney. And they have a whole bunch of different uh, like art and uh, music notes and stuff like that on display. It's really kind of cool. Look at this. Wow. Return to property. That's cool. Speaking of music, this has got to be one of the coolest things I've seen in here because it's so unique. You wouldn't know exactly what it was unless it was pointed out to you, but this was the wind chime that they used to make the sound effects for Tinkerbell's movements. Look, and here she comes. Isn't that cool? That's so amazing. Now we're making our way to the world around us. And this is also awesome because you get a look at some of the true life adventures. Wow, look at, it's actually changing colors in here. Oh, Walt's talking about the true life adventures right here too. Preserve our lakes and streams. These things will last us for generations to come. That is why the National Wildlife Federation wants you to know about its program of multiple use through balanced planning. To further this program, they ask you and me, all of us, to support our local conservation agencies and to purchase the annual edition of these colorful and instructive wildlife stands. Thank you. The lighting and the sound effects in this room is so incredible. I love it so much. I loved all of the True Life Adventures. I think it's one of Walt Disney's best works and a lot of people don't even recognize it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, a lot of diehard fans know what I'm talking about, but the True Life Adventures series was one of my favorites. Now it's time to move along to the innovations room. And this is really cool how they have everything broken up by different little themed rooms. Oh my lord, are those audio animatronic parts over there? Oh boy. A lot of people always ask me what's something I just absolutely love about Disney and I always immediately say audio animatronics. Uh, growing up there was a grocery store uh, that I used to go to, my mom used to take me to, I think it was called Sugarman's and they had a animatronic butcher uh, at the top of the store and I used to be petrified to walk past that animatronic like it scared me to death and growing up now I admire them I'm like so fascinated by them and it's so strange how that sprung from something I was terrified of and now it's like the highlight of you know going to Disney I love seeing all the audio animatronics 
they have some audio animatronic uh, parts that you can actually move here and these are all from different attractions right here is one of the hands from Pirates of the Caribbean and Magic Kingdom and they have little turny knobs here that it usually lets you just move it around a little bit oh yeah look at isn't that so cool Wow that's remarkable I can't believe I'm doing this right now I got to do this once uh, I did something like this at uh, Jim Henson's uh, creature studio and I thought it was so amazing and look at now I'm doing it here Wow and then look over here you actually have a head an audio animatronics electric head from the Hall of Presidents look at all of the detail in there it's kind of scary looking but you can definitely tell the details in there look at that I just want to look at everything in there they even have an audio animatronic from it's a small world look at that that's awesome holy moly Bonnie's over there at the castle I see ya. Ooh, look at this, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Wow, I love that. This is such an amazing room in here. I love everything. They even have a Peter Pan ride vehicle right here. Too cool. This is a cool selection here because it breaks down some of the Disney props by uh, like time and this is the 1950s and 1960s you can see you've got Zorro over there you got some Davy Crockett items and then oh over here 1960s to 1970s they have a poo for president hat which is really cool my friend Ryan uh, he did a video about the whole entire Winnie the Pooh presidency it was really cool and I have some memorabilia from that so that's interesting but the thing that caught my eye is the 1980s to 1990s this is it this is my, this is, this is what I'm all about. They even have book from Hocus Pocus right here. This is from the movie. Look at even that logo right there. The Disney catalog and Epcot Center. This is my wall. I love this wall. Disney dollars up there. Look at that. Too cool. Roger Rabbit, the Rocketeer. Wow, I'm looking at everything. And I'm like, MGM Studios right there. Where's the Michael Eisner fans out there? <laughs> Where's the, you, you like Mike, Michael Eisner? I do like Michael yep, Eisner. Yep, that's the time. Yeah. And then of course, we're going into the 2000s and they have some high school musical props over here. Bonnie, is this your time? Yes. Yeah, this is your time, huh? This is my time. I can tell, big high school musical fan over there. I am. <laughs> That was incredible. There was so much that I was geeking out and <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was very hysterical to see me walk through there. Let's just say that. And uh, yeah, I didn't show everything because I wanted to leave. You know, if people do plan on coming by and they want to visit it, they can see it without it fully getting spoiled in the video. But now we're in the gift shop and they have like a little gift shop where they sell some stuff from the exhibition and they even sell Roosevelt shirts here. The shirt that I'm wearing right now is actually going to be probably sold here or definitely on Shop Disney, but this is another one right here. Look at You guys know I wear this shirt a lot and it's $85 here. Buying it at Disney 100 right here. They got a lot of other stuff too. They sell all of the posters of the rooms that you walk through here and I'm kind of interested in that. $20 and these are exclusive posters. but. Wow, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. 200 dollars for the collection. And I would have to buy all of them. I, I, the collection would have to be complete. Well, the Franklin Institute was a lot of fun. I had plenty of fanboy moments in there looking at all of the history of Disney and looking at all the cool props that they had. And uh, yeah, it took us about 30 minutes, maybe about 45 minutes to actually go through all of it, but it wasn't busy in there. There was nobody there, so we didn't have to wait in any of the lines. But now I think uh, it's time uh, we move along. We're making our way to our first cheesesteak spot. And look at this road we're driving down. It's so awesome. I think this is the Italian market down here. Look at this. This is so cool. 
All right, now it is time for us to start our Philly cheesesteak adventure. And we made our way down to the Italian market. And this area is so amazing. Look at this. I love it. All the different pizza, pasta, and they have nice areas where you can sit down and relax. This is where the good stuff is. I would love to do a lot of pizzas like down here. Like right here is a nice little pizzeria here. But today, I think we're all about cheesesteaks, even though that pizza looks amazing. Holy moly. I kind of just like walking around here though. This is so beautiful. Everything is. Let me know in the comments if you guys have a favorite Philly cheesesteak spot. And if I don't visit them in this video, maybe the next time I'll come up and try some of your suggestions. I love looking at all of these restaurants. Look at this, the bakery. And then you got these pretty lights on the street here. Too cool. We're going to do our best not to actually eat too much because we want to do multiple cheesesteak spots so we can decide which one we like more. And uh, also, I can't pass up any pizza opportunity. So if there's a place that's rocking a good pizza, I feel like we need to try it. So it might be a pizza cheesesteak combination, but I'm here for it. Our first stop is going to be here at Angelo's Pizzeria on 9th Street. And uh, I've never had their hoagies here, but I've gotten high recommendations to come and check it out. So here we are. Angelo's has that classic Italian restaurant feel to it where it's cash only, closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, and uh, you go in, you place your order, and then they call out your name when it's done, and then you pay. And uh, I'm excited. Our order's in, and we're just going to wait until it's ready. All right, here we go. We've got Cooper Sharp with fried onions. Let's see this bad boy. Oh, my Lord. Look at that bread. Holy moly, that is intense right there. Wow. All right, here we go. I'm diving in on Angelo's here. The bread is already looking very impressive. I can't wait to see how it tastes all together. Lots of meat though, lots of meat. So here we go. Oh yeah. What's your thoughts on Angelo's, mom? It's good. Yeah. Very, very good. Very good. Yep. Do you like the bread? I love the bread. I know. That's what I'm. I, yeah, I'm all about the bread. Yes. Yeah. And now we're gonna it try the pizza. Nice crunch to it. That's what you need. Yeah. Yep. I'm really happy that I'm doing this cheesesteak adventure with my mom and sister because to me a cheesesteak isn't all about the cheese. I mean, I'm more of a meat guy, so I'm going to be probably judging the cheesesteaks off the flavor of the meat, while Bonnie and my mom are probably going to be all about the cheese. So it's kind of cool how, how we're going to get two different perspectives on it. And here is a look at the pizza. Holy moly, I was not expecting that. Wow. It's like a thick crust, but it's got a nice little char on the side of it. This looks like an unbelievably amazing pizza. I'm glad that we decided to get the pizza too. All right, now it's time for the pizza. And this pizza has such high expectations for me. Look at this. Wow. Look at that. Look at that undercarriage. Look at that. That is so beautiful looking. Here we go. Cheers. Bon Bon's going in for the pizza slice. Give it a go there. That's pretty tasty. It's good? Angelo's was good and the bread definitely stood out for me. It was very, very delicious and the pizza wasn't that bad either. It had a unique taste to it. I wouldn't say it was like the best pizza I've ever had, but it was definitely a unique experience. And now it's time to move along to our next Philly cheesesteak uh, destination. All right, up next we got John's Roast Pork, established in 1930. 1930, this closes at 5 p.m. So we had to run over here as fast as possible. And I'm probably betting it might be cash only. 
here is a little bit of background information on John's roast pork. It's been around for a long time and it used to be known as John's Lunch and it was voted number one cheesesteak by the Philadelphia Inquirer. Also uh, is seen on the Travel Channel with uh, Anthony Zimmerman's Bizarre Foods and Cheap Eats. Now it says John's roast pork, but they are known for their uh, Philly steaks. And I feel like I am also inclined to try their roast pork. It's in the name. Now it's time to unroll John's Philly steak and see what it looks like. Let's see here. Ooh, they got a double wrapped, double wrapped I say. Oh wow, the bread looks even better here. Holy moly, I was not expecting that. Doesn't look too cheesy either. Very, wow. This is gonna be, wow, this is gonna be close. I really, it's gonna be hard to compare these two. I'm gonna try to pull it apart a little bit, just show you the inside there. Oh yeah. This is, oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. Time to try John's now. And we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the Philly steak and then we're gonna get to the pork. I think I'll do the pork afterwards, but. Uh, Ooh, there we go. This bread might be better than Angelo's bread. I hate to say it because it has way more seeds on it, but here we go. I hate to say it, but after the first bite, I immediately knew John's roast pork has a better Philly cheesesteak. It was instantly, instantly. I don't even know what it was. Maybe it was just the overpowering flavor from the steak. I don't know. It just literally clicked instantly for me. So that's my vote. I'll ask, I'll see what Bon Bon and my mom think. Well, we've definitely tried two very good steak spots. What's your pick? Angelo's or John's? Angelo's. Angelo's? Yeah. Mom. I really like the flavor of the steak from John's. Oh, is that what it is? So yeah, what's what's doing it for you for Angelo's? Is it like the cheese? Mixed, yeah, it's a cheese. It's, it's like more cheesy. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm not the biggest fan of cheese, so that's probably why I'm leaning towards John's more yeah. because it doesn't have as much cheese. Yes. And it's on the bottom, too. It's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. The other one, it's kind of all mixed together. Yep. And not only that, but the bun. Oh, my the, God. The bread? The bread. Yeah, it's a little bit harder. Yeah. I noticed that. So you're, you're Team Angelo's, too? I'm Team Angelo's. Wow, I'm the only one. I'm Team John's. <laughs> well, except for Ariel. What do you think? She just likes the pizza. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's she looking for? She wants a Gatorade. She wants a drink. There you go. All right. Well, enough of the cheesesteaks. Now it's time for the roast pork. This is what's in the name here. John's roast pork. So I'm excited to give it a go. It looks really good. Definitely, uh, a, it's a different bread too. It's a different, it's a different roll. Oh, 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 oh yeah. You can definitely taste the seasoning on there. That is good though. Wow. It's hard for me to say what I would want to come back here for. You know what I mean? Like if I was to come back, maybe I just might be double doing it. Might be double doing it. Doing a little roast pork and a little Philly steak. That's how it's going to have to be from here on out. Yeah, I'll share for you. Also, check out this. It looks like John's roast pork is getting their own potato chips. Well, they're possibly getting their own potato chips because this is a contest. You have to uh, vote for your favorite flavored by Philly uh, potato chip. And there's like a little, there's a little QR code right here. So if you guys want to vote, go uh, give it a vote. Now I think we're going to try them. It's going to, they said it tastes just like the uh, pork sandwich. I'm actually pretty stunned because these chips literally taste just like the pork sandwich. You can actually see the seasoning on there. Also, I'm just kind of enjoying my time right here. This very cool setting with the tables. Got like the nice brick buildings behind us. Just hanging out. I was super stressed out because driving through Philly, it's kind of hectic, especially when you get in the South Philly. The streets are very narrow, <coughs> stuff like that. But I'm happy now, I'm happy. And with that, I think we are done in Philadelphia for today. We have to drive back home. It's about a two and a half hour drive. I have been driving so much, like in between airports. Uh, this has been an amazing trip. Like I never ever got to travel like this before. And now I love it. Like it's so amazing. But uh, yeah, we're gonna head on home. The food was great. Like I said, I'm Team John's and Bonnie and my mom both love Angelo's. So if you're all about the cheese, Angelo's, if you do like the, 
the flavor of the meat, probably John's. I mean, that's why I liked it. And now it's time to head home and, uh, oh, I'm going to see if we can find uh, the uh, Steamboat Willie movie my mom's talking about because I want to find that. So I'm going to dig through all of my old family stuff and uh, maybe show you a couple things. Okay, we are back home now. My mom told me where the Steamboat Willie movie was, and I think I found it. I found that, and I also found this little thing. Look at this. This is really cute and adorable. I love this. This is me and my brother. Look at it. Look at that, Nathan and Billy. What dreams are made of. Look at me. Look at me there. And then here's the projector. I don't know what's in this box. I think the movies are in here. Everything's dusty. This was down in storage. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, it looks like there's only one movie in here, though, Ma. Let's see. I don't know what it is. Oh, there's another one down here. Oh, look at Einen Drug Camera Department. <laughs> what the heck is that? Let's see. What's this? Einen Drug Camera Department. Oh, there's a case though. There's a case. We have a case. We have a case. I'm afraid of things breaking because they're so old. Oh, Ooh, what is this? That is awesome. That's what was in the case. So cool. I've never, I, I don't know how to use any of this stuff, but that's pretty cool. That is really awesome right there. So I don't think I found Steamboat Willie, but I did find some home movies of my mom. And I'm not too sure if I can get the projector to work, but uh, I'm going to explore around with it and see what happens, you know? This is the only one I found right here, and I can't really see what's on the slides themselves. But my mom says Steamboat Willie is here somewhere. I believe her. Maybe I just got to look around. I don't even know what this is. What the heck is this? Oh, that's the projector? <laughs> Slide projector. Slide projector, okay. I don't know what that is. I think this is all just a projector. Oh, there's a little case here. We found another case. Now we did find some slides. It looks like it's a wedding. We have to ask my mom whose wedding this is. Was it mom's wedding? No, it couldn't no. have been. That's so interesting. Look, you can actually see them up there. Wow, that is awesome. I mean, if that is the correct date, it'd be October of 75. October of 1975? Yeah. No. No, because this one says January 76. Yeah, I don't think that's right. It looks like I wasn't able to find the Steamboat Willie, and I'm a little afraid to touch anything. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't know how to work anything, so I'm going to take this to an expert. So we'll probably, maybe, I'll, I'll recap you on what we discover on the film uh, once we... Uh, once we get it looked at and checked out. I think it's really nifty. Let me know if anything you uh, you see, you recognize, you know? And maybe I might stumble upon the film. My mom swears by it. She's like, Steamboat Willie is there somewhere. So we'll keep looking, but uh, we'll save that for another video. But I hope you enjoyed this one. We had a lot of fun. We went to Philadelphia. We enjoyed some cheesesteaks, the Franklin Institute. It was amazing. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.